everyone, it's Lou Collins. Um, a little bit of a different video for me today, and this is purely for beginners to die cutting. So I've just received a, another craft stash order, and that's a Sizzix Big Shot. Uh, mine was getting quite worn. It wasn't uh, functioning the way I wanted it to, so um, I've got a new one now. Now, um, that's purely down to the fact that I probably make 100 die cuts a day easy. Um, you know, it's my day job, so you expect these things after a year or two to wear out. That's normal. It's like it's like running a car and never getting it uh, fixed. It's just not going to happen. So I got my new Sizzix die cutting machine and I took it out of the box and I thought, Do you know what, actually, there's some of you who might be looking at this and thinking, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to put this together. There are instructions. Perhaps uh, you're not so good with reading small print, for example. So I just thought, do you know what? Let's just put the um, die cutting machine together, together. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do when um, you take your machine out of the box is you do have this black plug, this black, um, it's like a support. And it actually says on it, remove and discard. And you can do that. You don't need that. Um, next, I'm going to just take my tag off. So small pair of scissors and just remove that. And I've also got some plastic around the handle here. You can just remove those too. Then everything you need is going to be here together. And that includes the tools you need. So there's an Allen key in there so you can put this together. And all we need to do is put the handle on, as simple as that. So there's a little bit of tape across the top. So I'm just going to snip this away. And another piece at the bottom here. But it's been a little while since I've opened one of these because like I say, my big shots always last me a very long time. And it's quite nice to have new ones in videos as well. So where you've got your handle, you'll have a little bag and that will have some small pieces in as well. So you've got an Allen key, you've got a bolt, a washer, and then a plug for the end, four pieces. So put those to the side. Now within here, so you can slide your plates out. Within here you have a piece of plastic which we're also going to remove so it's just simply sellotape on the back cut this open so you can remove this don't worry it's not part of the machine it's just holding your instruction manual and your plates all together so again remove this plastic you've got your instruction manual now this does have like I say written instructions they're all very very clear it's worth keeping this um, but it's also got in here um, what pla what sandwich plates well what plates you're going to need when you're cutting with different dies embossing folders and such so if you're new to die cutting definitely keep this as well so there's your plate so you should have within your packet two plain or clear uh, cutting plates and please don't worry they're not going to stay clear for very long at all now you do have some suction on these so just gently ease these open there we go so that's just because they're new plastic, they kind of stick together. But you've got your two clear plates, your cutting mats. These can go either way up, they're identical. And it's uh, definitely recommended that you switch these around every time you die cut or every few times so that the top plate is different each time. And also flip them over too. But you notice on these plates, they've actually got a slight, a very slight beveled edge. Hopefully you can see that there. Uh, that's sort of the frosted bit. So you've got this on either end. And it's ideal if you can put that so that the beveled edge is at the top of your sandwich and the same with the bottom plate so that's underneath. So that way as you run through the machine it's kind of just giving it a little bit of a run up onto the plates. This is one of the, your cutting shims and you're going to remove this usually when you're using an embossing folder. If you look at the thickness of it it's, um, it's not as thick as the clear plates but it's a thick white plastic and that is around about roughly the thickness of your embossing folders when you come to do them. So that's what you'll take out to fit your folders in. You've then got, this is your, what they call the standard platform and this is your base plate. So other people refer to it as base plate. Very thick plate, this one, thick white plastic. Again, on here, you've got instructions so that you've got a guide as to which sandwich combinations to use when you're embossing, um, when you're die cutting different particular dies here. So you're not going to be without instruction, even if you do lose your instruction manual, forget where you put it, because it always happens, doesn't it? So that's always on there. Again, you can use this either way up. I just prefer to keep my instructions to the top so they're protected as they go through the machine by the other plates. And then if I need to refer to it at any time, it's there. 
Now, if you do have the Biggs dies, they are, very, well, they're not old dies, there are some newer ones, because for example, Sizzix have Eileen Hull de uh, designed some fantastic Biggs dies, but years ago, many of our cutting dies were these big ones, and they were as thick as this. They were in a plastic casing, they had foam backing, and they were this thick. And we would need to remove this and simply run those big dies through the two clear cutting plates. That was all, that was enough to make your sandwich. Essentially, when you're die cutting, every sandwich needs to be the same thickness, the same width to get through the rollers here. And that's why we have different plates. You can make up different combinations with different tools. So here is your Sizzix machine without the handle on at the moment. You'll notice you should have rubber feet, uh, six rubber feet on the bottom if we're looking at the, just the normal, the original Sizzix. If you're looking at a Sizzix uh, Plus, that is much larger. So that is, um, a, if it's A4, almost letter size through it. So we've then got the handle. We need to pop the handle on. So it's simply a square hole and a square plug. This doesn't come out, so don't worry. You're going to just pop that onto there and you'll notice that will move around. Open your little bag of tools. And then you've got your washer. If you put your bolt through your washer and then put your bolt into that hole inside of the handle. I always give it a little twist with my fingers until I absolutely can't grip it anymore. And then your Allen key, both ends will fit into the end of this bolt. Just pop that in and give that a turn and turn that until that is hand tight. What I mean by that is hold your handle still and turn it as tight as you can do it without straining. Now this is a thin metal Allen key, so you do get, you might get a little bit of give in this, um, but if you're forcing it, you could make that too tight. Don't get yourself a drill with an Allen key connection and start trying to, to do that with a drill or any sort of tool like that. It's just going to be too tight, you could damage your machine. So just use the Allen key provided and your hands. Um, if you are really struggling with dexterity or with strength, maybe just get someone else to tighten that for you. But that has just secured that handle so that can't come off. And then you've got the rubber plug here and that's just going to go over the end there. Now, if you're die cutting and you find your handle does slip off, you've not tightened it enough. You simply need to then get something under there, under the edge, remove that plug again and give it to tighten up or um, add it on. Now, I would suggest keep your Allen key maybe just take a little bit of tape like so pop that onto the instructions and put that all together somewhere safe now if you don't keep your box then uh, that's definitely worth putting somewhere safe but if you do keep your box of course you can pop that back in the box with everything i would suggest always keep your box for a few months just in case you get a problem with your machine i've never had it a brand new machine has always lasted me a couple of years at least um, but if you, you know, if you do have a problem, you need to return it to where you bought it from. You will need the box. So definitely pop that up in the loft or the garage or somewhere with the Allen key, with the instructions, and then you're good to go. So then it's time for you to make your first cut. Now I do have uh, a video on my channel talking about tips for die cutting, for getting the best possible cut, and there's lots of other instruction out there. Um, any questions, please do drop me a comment. I'm happy to help. Um, I hope for some of you this has given you the confidence to maybe purchase your own die cutting machine um, or to get yours out of the box and put it together. So uh, hopefully it's been helpful. Please leave me a comment and let me know and I'll see you again very soon. Take care.